Hey, Coach, thanks for taking the time today. Yep, thanks. We'll kick it, we'll kick it off with Ruben, and then we'll go to Brooks. Hey, Nick. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about a game like this when things start snowballing. Uh, what steps can you take uh, – mid-game, in the game, on the sideline, uh, to try to get the thing uh, back on track? You know, you're just you're just trying to make adjustments that you can make that will that give you a chance to put the guys in positions to succeed first and foremost. And I, I, I'm assuming you're asking me as, uh, you know, at the coaching perspective of it. So first and foremost, you're, you're trying to put guys in positions to succeed and make the adjustments that you need to make. And then, right, there's there's a time where it's, hey, you know, um, encouragement and hope, and there's a time where there it's you know try to yell and and, and inspire or you know do something that on that out, out, uh, rant of it, and so it's it's one or the other um, in that. But you're all but first and foremost, like I, you know, it's it's trying to get the guys in position to succeed and adjust to the the things that that are going on, um, and then and then the other things that I said. How do you know which direction to go with that? It's just got to be a feel. Obviously, uh, the feel that I had yesterday wasn't wasn't the right one, um, you know, because it didn't we didn't kick out of it. Um, but again, it's it's I don't think there's a, you know, you, you go into things sometimes, Rube. It's like, hey, here's what I want to run against these coverages, and here's what I want to do against this offense, and here's what I want to do here. And that's you know when you're dealing with when you're dealing with you know, X's and O's that, that you can do that. But when you're dealing with human element and people, there's not a blueprint on that. You can lean back on, uh, uh, you know, there's not a, a coverage beater list for that if, that, if that makes sense. You can lean back on former or past experiences, but you try different things to, to try to get it going. Um, you know, we didn't, we, we were down in a, in a hole right from the beginning. At, you know, I think I was watching the offensive tape again today and we had six plays and we were down 21 nothing. Well, that's a that's a product of every everybody. That's first and foremost, coaching, and then offense, defense, and special teams. Um, and so again, there's there's just so many different variables. You you, you know, um, different thoughts that you have based off prior experiences and things that you've learned from different coaches, um, but not something that you say, this is what's going to work in this in this particular case. We'll go to Brooks and then Dave. Hey, Nick, a, a quick question before a second. Uh, with Ben Van Sumeren in there, was that because of numbers or is he a fullback for you guys? Yeah, we'll see. Um, you know, I don't think that's um, something that the, the, the opponent's going to know, and I don't think that's something I'll discuss here. Um, so we'll see uh, what, what's going on there um, with him. Um, I know he's, he's been doing some really good things on special teams, um, you know, and, and, is, and he has great athletic ability. Um, and again, like to me, Ben, when we were pointing out our roles at the beginning of the year, um, Ben was a guy I looked right at and said, you, you got to be one of our best uh, top five core special teams guys leading the charge um, with your athletic ability, your toughness, your physicality. Um, and he's done a nice job of that so far. And uh, we'll see where that leads. And it's clear that uh, throughout your team, you've, 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 uh, you've had people take personal accountability um, Players throughout the locker room were saying that Jalen was saying that you you yourself have uh, taken personal accountability. Do you feel like there's still times to pick spots as a disciplinarian? How do you see that kind of approach in terms of accountability lead to action and change on some of the mistakes that have been happening? Sure. You're only getting a right, uh, Brooks. You're only getting a piece of what's going on, right? You're you're seeing what I'm telling you in these in these interactions. You're seeing what the players are telling you in these interactions. But we got a lot of time in there too where you know the, the mistakes are ge being corrected um, and um, we're going to take accountability first and foremost because that's the only way you can continue to but that doesn't mean as a coach that you're not you yes as a, as a coach I'm going to go up there in front of the team first and foremost and say what I screwed up but then I'm going to tell them what I feel like they screwed up right and I'm going to tell the coach that's my job as the head coach and I'm going to tell the coaches what I think they screwed, you know, the coaches before the players even get there, what I think they screwed up. And that's not an indictment on anybody. It's all in the attempts to get better. Um, and so, again, accountability is key if you're going to fix mistakes. And you've got to look at yourself first. But then as leaders on the football team, you've got to point out what the mistakes are. That's my job as the head coach. That's the, that's the coordinator's jobs. That's the position coach's jobs. 
that's a leader of our leaders of our football team's job is to point out the mistakes that are happening. So I do want you to see in public that it's only us taking accountability for ourselves and not pointing the finger at anybody else because that's where it starts. And then what we do behind closed, you, there's a lot that you don't see obviously behind closed doors of how we get things fixed. We'll go to Dave. Hey, Nick, with uh, with a veteran defensive coordinator, I, I'm just curious your role in developing the game plan on that side of the football. And then what did you make of, of the game plan defensively yesterday? Yeah, you know, obviously uh, they'll, they'll do uh, the majority of the work, obviously, and come into me and, and then I'm going to ask them, hey, what are we doing here in this scenario? What are we doing on that scenario? Um, what are we doing against this type of run? That You know, so there's a long checklist of things that we kind of cover um, as far as, you know, after, you know, they do they go through the game plan process because obviously you know that I'm in, involved with the offensive game planning. Um, and then it's just, there, you know, there's different things of, you know, situational things that, that I'll have a vision on. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that's everything, that I have a vision on how we're going to do this or how we're going to do that. But there are certain things of, that I have a vision of how I see our team playing. Um, but I hired him to, uh, you know, I obviously hired Vic to, to do a job, and he's done a job, a good job of, this, of, of being a defensive coordinator's league for a very long time. I think, um, you know, the game plan, whenever you, you play like we did yesterday, you're going to look first and foremost and say, how was the, you know, could we have put these guys in better positions? And if the answer is yes, you know, you'd take those notes. If the answer is, hey, we had them in good positions, they didn't succeed, you know, that's, that's noted as well. Um, and so, and I think anytime you play like that, there's a little bit of yes to both. Um, so, I mean, a question, you know, the question you're asking me, how do I feel like the game plan was yesterday? Well, obviously I don't feel good about how the game plan was yesterday because we didn't play good. Um, and we didn't, and we didn't coach good. And so, and that's why we lost. Um, and so, you know, that, that's where I am with that. We'll go to Ed and then Elliot. Hi, Nick. Um, yeah. ask you about. Uh, Jahan Dotson, I know he's only been here, what, six weeks, and he just doesn't seem as involved. Third-team receiver, the top two guys around, he didn't seem to have big, a big of a role yesterday in terms of targets. Uh, what needs to be done maybe to get him a little bit more involved? Again, um, you know, you c it's it's hard to force-feed someone the football based off of, again, you all, as an offensive coach, you always want to be on the attack. But, you know, there's there's being on the attack, and then there's also taking what the defense gives you. And, you know, and some of the – the ball went to him when it, when it was supposed to go to him yesterday. Um, you know, uh, and, and there are some times, like, and there's some times where the ball could have went to him or something, you know, might have, might have happened that took that away. And so it's, again, you're a product sometimes of how the defense is played as a wide receiver. It's, you know, it's – it's a little different sometimes at wide receiver of of how the ball gets gets itself to you. Um, yeah, I, you know, again, it just it just didn't find it. It didn't find the ball didn't find him as much yesterday, um, and it has in these first couple of weeks. But that doesn't mean um, we're any less uh, high on him than we were when we first got him. I think he's got great playmaking ability, great potential, and we just got to find ways to um, figure out how to use that potential. Nick, I was curious if you could give us your assessment of how Jalen has played in these first four games and more specifically, maybe what you see, if there's any common thread between the turnover problems that have been happening. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, again, I've had, I think, as a football team, you know, I know that it's, there's going to be a lot that's always brought on the, onto the starting quarterback, I, and that obviously we, we understand that. But as a football team, I think it's just been consistency. Right, um, offensively, defensively, it's just been our consistency, and that's something I, I gotta do as a head coach is make sure that you know our consistency is there. Um, you know, we missed one tackle last week. We missed more, you know, fourteen or whatever this week. Um, and and again, just the consistency of third down, consistency of red zone. You know, we haven't been great in the red zone, and then yesterday we were we, we were a little bit better there. Um, and so again, I don't. It's just, it's just that consistency consistency thing of the entire team, um, and myself, Jalen, um, offense, defense, special teams. It's all of us. Um, as far as the turnovers, Elliot, that'll be something that we we um, 
that we really dive into on a bye week this week um, and, and spend a lot of time on that. Um, again, I've told you guys that it's not sustainable that you know we're minus six. Uh, that, that's not a sustainable stat. You're, you're going to be, shoot, I'm not sure you're two and two when you're minus six many times. Um, somehow we are. Um, but we got to make sure we got to make sure that 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 makes a big change, both taking the football away as a defense and protecting it as an offense. So that'd be something that, you know, when you go into your bye week, you study everything. You study the turnovers, you study negative plays, you study sacks, you study third down and all the different scenarios in there. You study two minute, you study four minute, you study, um, you know, Everything. You, I mean, everything is on the table. You study anything that you you deem yourself um, insufficient at as an offense and defense. You study everything you think that you're good at um, to try to you know make sure that you're you're finding your identity and and doing what you what you do well. Um, and so everything will be on the table. That I'll have you know as far as with the turnovers again. That will be a big emphasis this week of what why i mean we got an idea obviously we're we 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 know we we got a good idea because you know it's only four games into it um but we'll be looking at it you know even more in depth with the what the why uh common threads um amongst players common threads amongst uh plays play types um down in distances situations all that stuff we'll go to john mcmullen and then jeff mcclain Hey, Nick, um, this, to kind of follow up on Dave's question about the defensive and the game planning, you and I were talking a little last week about Vic and his experience, something you haven't had before. And if you go back to, you know, 2021 with Jonathan and, and the slow start, you made some uh, adjustments and, 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 and went in there. Curious at that experience of Vic, if it I don't know the right word. If you hesitate at all because he's done it for so long, or is it something you no. need to do no matter what? Yeah, that's my job as the head coach. You know, again, the the everything the the product that's on the field is a direct reflection of me. Um, and so, and and I know Vic feels that way about about the defense, but I still, as the head coach. Yeah, I mean, if I feel like if something's on my mind and, and I got and I'm going to I'm going to tell Vic about it. I, don't, I think you get or, you know, obviously you guys don't spend time around me on here, but uh, I'm not real shy about telling people how I feel about about different things, because at the end of the day, all I care about is us winning. Um, and that would be malpractice on my part. If I was feeling something about the defense, Jonathan Gannon, Vic Fangio, uh, who you name the you name the coordinator, I mean, um, that if I didn't say anything about that, you know, what I, what I feel. So, um, again, you, you have visions of things that how you see it, um, in different scenarios. Um, but you know, we, we watched that tape together. We sat in there today, watched the entire tape together, um, went through all of it, talked, talked about, you know, what the issue was for each, you know, each play, um, that, that we failed on, what the answer, what the solution um, we discussed, you know, different things, players, personnel, um, past experiences of what's worked against those different things. And so that's an organic uh, conversation. And that that's like, um, you know, like we talked about with the offense that it's, you know, everybody's involved in that, not just Vic, not just me, not just Vic and I, but the entire defense. We'll go to Jeff and then Martin. Uh, Nick, on, on uh, Jalen's, uh, on the strip sack where, in which Jalen fumbled, um, you didn't mention this after the game, but how much of the situational, how much of uh, a situational awareness uh, should he have had on first down in that situation? And then also on some of the sacks that he held the ball too long and took in terms of, again, situational awareness. Yeah, you know, um, obviously we're going to want some of those plays back and there's different reasons for why they you know, on the one that was a fumble, they did a good job of clouding up the picture uh, to that to that um, front side, and that, and the back, you know, was eaten up in protection on that particular play. So you don't have your you don't have your check down. Um, that actually happened on the other sack too, um, where you, where they eat where they eat your back up, and sometimes you don't have that um, you know that check down. As far as so, there's different things that account for that. You know, Jalen uh, Saquon steps up. Um, makes a good initial strike, kind of moved around him. 
um, again, it's sometimes it's hard to see right behind you where it is. And, you know, I know that, that, that you know, we, we got to talk about like that clock in your head too. So again, there's so many different things, how the defense played, how somebody ran a route, you know, Grant had to go do something different on the route based off of where the safety was to attract him uh, and then cross his face. So it took a little bit longer to develop. Like, and I get it. Like, I, I get that the quarterback is always going to be the guy that's scrutinized for the fumble because the, the it goes on him. And the same thing as an interception, but there's different things that account for it. I thought the protection was good on the play. Um, and, and sometimes it is. Like, I'm not, I'm never going to sit here and say, it. sometimes it is his fault, right? And I'm not, but I'm not going to tell you, hey, on this particular one, this was his or that. You know, I'm not going to do that. But like, well, just, there's I different things. Know. Hold on. There's different things that account for, you know, the ball, you know, again, like I said, with Grant. And, but, you know, does he have to have that clock in his head ticking? Yeah, of course. Um, that's, that's part of his job, too, as the quarterback. But there are so many different things that account for a turnover. Again, that's, you win as a team and you lose as a team. You turn the ball over as a team and you protect it as a team. It's never, ever, you, you, you know, you, you win on – a, a, a collection of plays, but not just one play. And, and I think that that's something that we, we got to put our head down and just grind to make sure we're, we're fixing all the mistakes because you never know when that play is going to be. You never know when that's, um, that, that turnover is going to be. But again, this is, this is the greatest team sport there is. And I say that a lot after wins. Uh, I know I say that a lot after wins and how honored I am to be part of a football team. Um, but that also applies in, in losses as well, um, and on bad plays as well. That it is a full, full team effort. Yeah, but the quarterback gets paid more than anybody else on the team for a sure reason. He does. Sure and, he does. Right, and, and Jalen's in those fifth years, fourth year as a starter. Um, I'm just wondering if if that is when you're making the corrections, that is something that's being pointed out to him specifically. That in that situation on first down. Yeah, maybe of, co- take, yeah, maybe of course. Every, or get to throw the ball away. Again, okay. anytime there's a mistake on the tape, the number of that person is is put up there. Um, doesn't matter who they are. Doesn't matter you know what they play, how long they've played, how many Pro Bowls they've made, how many what the the numbers put on there. Because again, that would be malpractice by myself, Jeff, if I didn't if I didn't correct and our coaches didn't correct you know um, mistakes that are happening because we're just trying to get better uh so we we don't make the same mistakes twice and so that's the same thing that's the same thing there we'll go to martin and then jeff nyberg hey nick um you, you talked a little bit yesterday about you know you're still looking for an identity and everything i was kind of curious like how long does that typically take i mean you know it's obviously week four you guys have had all the training camp and um you know, so just kind of wondering, you know, how long it takes and, and what you need to do to get that identity, like what needs to happen for that to happen. Well, identity is what you do well, right? Identity is what you do well, what you do consistent um, and what you hang your hat on. Um, that that changes year in, year out. Uh, what was our what our identity was in 21, 22, 23. Uh, all those years were had little difference differences in your who you are as identity. Same thing. Same thing now, and you figure that out as you go throughout the year. I'm not sure you see any team right now that says this is our identity, um, right? This, I mean, there's there's there, there's some probably, but um, there's not a lot. Like you're still you're figuring out what you do well because it is still a small sample size, and all you're trying to do is repeat the things that you do well and hide those things, complement those things. You're trying to um, not do the things that you don't do so well. Right. And again, it always starts with what the players do well, first and foremost, not what I like, not what Kellen likes, not what Kevin likes, not what Stout likes, but what our players do well. And so that's a and I, I'm not sure that's forever changing throughout the season. I think your identity, you know, you can say, you know, is this, but it, it's constantly evolving through the season. I know one thing that we can say that our identity is um as a football team is that, you know, we, we talk a ton about is our team, our accountability, our detail, right. And our, and our toughness that we're constantly trying to work on and become better at that at all times. Um, you know, and we feel like we've had moments of, of that throughout every, every game that we've had and shown that. Um, but like anything, we got to make sure that we're consistent with it. 
go to Jeff and then Jimmy. Nick, you mentioned uh, fundamentals a lot, that the fundamentals need to get corrected. And I'm assuming part of that it applies to the missed tackling problem. And, you know, r- right now, what, what is your level of concern or surprise that that's a problem four weeks in? What do you think is the biggest, you know, area of concern specifically with missed tackles? And, um, you know, do you think there's at all, at all a correlation uh, to how infrequent you guys and other teams uh, do live tackling and practice in camp? Yeah, I think fundamentals are tackling on defense. They're tackling their block destruction and how you get off blocks. Um, you know, those are the main ones that that are a, a defense um, a fundamentals. How you cover, how you rush. You know, I really think though when I'm thinking true basic basic fundamentals, block destruction, right? Block destruction and tackling. On offense, I think about blocking, right? The combo blocks that the offensive line does uh, together. Right, uh, and, and then ball security, same thing on defense, how you take the football away, um, how you catch the football, right? Those are the things that we talk about every single day, that we drill every single day, that's in team meetings every single day of how we're doing in, the, in those different things. So it is an emphasis of ours that, that we wanna be really good at. Now, this will be the week too that we kind of relook at some of the drills that we're doing. You try to do as many drills as you possibly can do um, you know, that simulate tackling as much as you possibly can. Tackling is something that's difficult for, for the entire league to, to really simulate um, how you do that because it's, it, you're not doing the, the thing live. Well, that's the same thing with ball security. You're more susceptible to fumble the football as you're truly getting tackled. So all these fundamental, like, but it's a long season, and I think what you have to do is is you have to put your guys in positions to simulate it while also protecting your guys to make sure that you have your guys every Sunday. Um, and so I think what, what, I'll, what I'll do definitely this week is, okay, let's look at, all right, we know that the issue, what are the common themes of the tackles we're missing? And I, and I got a pretty good idea of what they are. Um, how do we simulate that in drills? How do we show it in, in meetings? like from around the league, from us, um, to, so you emphasize it. And so that, that will be the process of what we go through this week. But with the amount of tackles we missed in this last game, right, it led to a lot of extra yards by them. And you're going to miss a couple tackles each game. But it, that, wasn't, that wasn't to our standard. And there were different circumstances of why that we need to get corrected. And anytime I talk about, like, I'm so passionate about details and fundamentals that 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 hurts me when we don't tackle well because I know how much time we put into it. And so what I'm going to, again, first and foremost, going to say, what did I not do well enough? How do we, and that, that's where I'm, the things I'm talking about to you guys are the things that I didn't do well enough and how do we correct that in a coaching standpoint of, to get better. And then the different things that we do fundamentally is gonna is gonna be big. We'll go to Jimmy and then end with Olivia. Hey Nick, I got another uh, turnover question for you. <laughs> uh, Jalen in 2021 and 2022 averaged 0.6 turnovers per game. 2023 and this year is up to 1.4 per game. So it's a drastic difference, double and then some. Forgetting, you know, what, you know, the issues are turnover wise this year and, and last year, what worked those two first years? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, you know, uh, it was, it's a different product of, you know, of different things that happen in the game, you know. Um, again, it, it's never, there, there's so many vari- variables that play into it. Sometimes it's how you, right, let's just talk about it from a quarterback standpoint. Sometimes it's how you carry the ball right um when you're running and it's carrying the ball when you're escaping then it's you know um you know the time to throw um deeper developing plays sometimes it's about the protection and having a hat for a hat sometimes it's about losing a one-on-one there um you know again it's gonna always you know sometimes it's about you know the route detail and the route discipline and and how that's affected or you know a missed throw or a uh, misread like and and the criticism is always going to go to to him the most because he touches the ball the most and he's, gonna, he's always going to have more turnovers than everybody else on the team per se now you know 
we've we've turned it over as a football team. Again, I go back to this. We've turned it over as a football team these past, you know, again, this year is really all I'm focused about. Um, and 23, more than we had in 21 and 22. Uh, and we're seeing the results of that. Like, uh, as what I've told you guys, like, it's not sustainable winning games when you're turning the football over. Again, you win as a team, you lose as a team, you turn the ball over a team, you, per- you, you turn the ball over as a team, you protect the football as a team. And so, again, it's important that we all understand that. Coaches, um, players, uh, we're all in this together because the only way to get the, the win-loss column fixed, the start of it, is the protection of the football. We'll end with Olivia here. Hey, Nick, one of the uh, sentiments among the defensive players out of the locker room last night was that Baker was getting the ball out really quickly and that the coverage on the back end needed to be stickier. Um, wh- why do you feel like there was that shortcoming? Was there was it more of um, the, the coverage that was being called or was it the execution within the structure of the defense? You know, again, the there's there's times on those if you if you kind of come back and look through through it. It, there's always Olivia. It's always going to be a combination of both, right? It's never, again, we're never going to say as coaches it's just the players, and it's we're never going and we're never going to say well it's, it's it's just the coaches. It's a it's a it's a team game that that takes everybody. Um, you know, there's times that you could say yeah, let let's be tighter in these scenarios. There's times where we were tight. Um, Baker got the ball out and we missed the tackle, right? There's times we didn't cover down fast enough. Um, you know, in our disguise, uh, you know, and so that's that's kind of you know both and our disguise. We want to hold the shell and 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 disguise, but then we it, it sacrifices you coming down late and they can get the ball out. So that's on you know that's on both sides of coaching and playing. But we're in this we're in this thing together, and it takes everybody. Um, so the answer on it's never going to be a thousand, hundred percent here and hundred percent there because that's just not the way this game's played. That's why it is the greatest team game. And I'll stand on that's the greatest team game, whether it's a win, well, I'll stand on that whether it's the greatest team game, whether it's a loss. But that's how you continue to come together through the tough times, through the good times, um, to become a team. Um, and I know, I know scenarios like yesterday, you know, you know, we, you know, getting beat like the way we got beat yesterday, we'll bring this team closer together. You know, you're either continuing to come closer together or you're, or you're, or you're uh, falling apart. And so, um, our goal is to make sure we're staying together through, you know, the adversity that we hit that hit us yesterday um, and, and just move on and get better from it. Thanks for the time, coach. Thanks, everybody.